Hey, Jason Heath here, and I've had some requests lately, both in person and online, to do an updated four score video. I did one in like 2017 or something like that that has gotten a lot of traction. I don't know that there are a whole lot of four score videos out there, and a lot has changed since 2017. So here we are in 2024 as I record this. I still use four score every single day, and I've been using four score since it came out, which I believe was day one that the iPad came out. I was randomly walking by the Apple Store in Chicago and Michigan Avenue on iPad launch day, what was that, like 2011, and I walked in and there was no line and I bought one and one of the first apps I downloaded was Fourscore and I've been using it ever since. And now there are many other apps besides Fourscore. I've used Newsic and other ways. You can use Dropbox even or just the file system on the iPad, but for so many reasons, I find Fourscore to be optimal for making my life work as a musician. And there's a lot in here, but it's also a fairly simple app. So I wouldn't worry too much about getting hyper-organized. It is a tolerant and flexible system, and as long as you get your material in here, you'll be good to go. So let's just go over the interface. We'll start up here with the library. I only have one library. I know that people who have different bands, you can uh, do different libraries. All I can do is talk about how I use this app, which is extensive, but there's much more that I don't do with this app. And the first thing you gotta do is get a score into there, and you can do it many different ways. AirDrop is a great way to do it. I can even go over in, I'll just go over to uh, Music, this other music notation app, and share, and then you can go and select four score and dump it in there and you're good to go. Once your score's in here, you don't have to give it all of this information. I wouldn't worry too much, just get started and get some music in here, but adding some properties will help. Definitely a title, call it whatever you want. Add a composer if you have multiple composers, you can add multiple composers in this field. Adding a genre can be helpful, tags, labels, all that kind of stuff. Difficulty, I find that helpful for students. The other way to add parts, and I do this if I'm in a hurry, is to scan. So you can scan and you can just use the camera right here or uh, pull from your photo library or anything like that. That's a good way to do it. You can also hop into your files app on the iPad and if you have music on Dropbox or however, but just get your music in to four score and I have found that the more I have in four score the more useful it is but it does take some time to get things into PDF form uh, that's been a, a decades-long process for me at this point but I find now that generally most of my music is in four score and then it's easy to find and it's easy to add to various set lists which I'll get into next and that's where the real power I think of four score lies so you got your scores and then you've got your set lists and this is where this program really comes to life because it's different ways of referencing the music so you've just got the one pdf but it's being referenced by different set lists kind of like a spotify playlist or something like that so i generally use manual for set lists but there are other different ways to view your set lists as well so let's go into this folder and i am a big fan of organizing with folders. Um, we've got uh, current technique, uh, which is what I start every day with. So I go in here and this, is, whoops, that's gig music. I go into current technique and these are just the pieces that I am uh, working on right now. So I'll go into my scales book and these, this hamburger menu, that's my set list menu. So just hit that to get back to whichever set list I'm on. Now, Bookmarks are another thing that are really handy, especially for kind of meaty technique things like this. This is 271 pages. There are different kinds of bookmarks too. These are page bookmarks, which are literally just like a bookmark, just as if I put a little flag in a physical book. So let's say I wanted to go to three active minor scales. It's right there. If I wanted to add another bookmark, I just hit that plus icon and that's kind of how that works. So I can also flag things, which is pretty cool. So let's flag, if I want to um, flag this page, now I can just jump right back to that. That's super useful if you're going through and you see something that needs practice, you can flag it and then just go to, go to flags here now. There's one and then if you're done with it, just 
on flag and it's gone. So a really handy way to make like a temporary bookmark. You can also set bookmarks that are a specific range of pages and that becomes a like a virtual item in your library. You can search for that independently and you can add that bookmark of pages just like a regular title. And that's super useful for like big chunky things. Like this is a orchestral excerpt PDF uh, and 589 pages. Okay, so if I had that and just added it to a regular set list, I'd have to hunt through that and maybe and, and maybe I just want like Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra out of here. So that is a bookmark. I've just gone through it and said these four pages are Young Person's Guide. And now to add something to a set list, you can just go click the title up here uh, and you come and see properties. There's also set lists. And now you can just go through and add, you can search for set lists if you have a ton like, like I do. And let's say I wanted to add this uh, to gig music or probably this would be audition or something like that. Now, if I go back to my uh, daily practice and I go to gig music, wow, young person's guide is there. And now if I want to remove it, I can just remove it like that and it's not deleted, it's just removed from the set list. To me, Foursquare got a lot more useful when iPad Pros came out and Apple Pencils came out, because now you can annotate, no problem. It was kind of a pain in the neck with your finger before that. But the default, or the way I have it set up, is you just start drawing and it'll just uh, come in in red. If you want to get more options, there are a lot of options. You can hit that little squiggle and then I can go up and I can choose erase, get rid of all of that. If I wanted to have a different color, like let's say I wanted blue to mean something and I wanted this to mean something, I can do all of that. Uh, and again, very deep app, simple, but a lot in there. You can just hit the trash icon and that will clear all the annotations on that page. And there are also these really cool stamps. So uh, if you want it to look a little cleaner than just your handwriting, you can choose like, for example, uh, I'll put some down bows here and I could do some up bows. And this just looks a lot more, uh, professional. I've done this uh, for, for several pieces and it, I find these stamps uh, very useful. There are also shapes. So if you want to do some crescendos or decrescendos, let's say this wanted a crescendo, you can add that in right there. And again, you can just go and clear your annotations if you don't want them and they'll disappear. So annotations are great. It's also a useful way to kind of clean up a page. You can choose this white and let's say um, you, you wanted to get rid of this crescendo, you can do that. And we could even, this is a little bit dot matrix printer looking -y. We could put in a, a nicer looking crescendo, that kind of thing. So uh, annotations are great, very, very useful and uh, non-destructive. This general search is a great way to just find anything. So I find that the, a really useful way to zone in on a title. And now a little bit more about the organization over here. I do a lot of teaching. And so this is set up for teaching base lessons, but you do you obviously, and there are many different ways to organize your music. So I do find genres to be very helpful, especially for uh, drilling down various bass quartets, method books, orchestra pieces, and that kind of thing. I find tagging things with difficult level uh, really useful. So if we go to like duets, um, genres, it's like the hardest stuff is all up here and we can go down and the easiest stuff is down here. So just a quick way to find, and then some of these are individual PDFs. If they got the I, that's that. Some of these are bookmarks within something else, but they all look just like regular files, which is cool. We've got metronome, you know, got uh, that. that's cool. I usually use another app, so I don't dip into that too much. Um, I, I haven't bought anything off of Foursquare, but there is a store right in here. You can go in and make purchases through various services. So that's great. You can call up a piano if you want to play along. I've done that with lessons from time to time. You can also rearrange pages, which is nice if something got out of order, uh, no big deal. And you can get in here and you can crop and do all sorts of stuff to really tidy things up. If I need to just quick and dirty make a score, I'll use that scan feature. I'll just take a photo of a piece and kind of move it around and crop it and make it look good. And then it's in my library. I would do that for like sectionals when I go into a school and I just want to copy the student's music. I would just really quickly snap all the pages and then I could hold my iPad and walk around and it's great. I've also attached 
a uh, video or maybe an MP3. I guess an MP3 to this. So I can play. There it is. And I can also change the speed. This crazy piece, I used this feature a lot when I was prepping it. And I want it to practice a little slower so you can go and go. <laughs> or choose three quarter speed. So you can add music. This, I guess you can add from your Apple Music, which is pretty cool. I usually just go into and uh, load some mp3s that I need in my files app I'll just airdrop it and then they'll appear if you hit that right there the other thing that I think is great for this is prepping for events and I do a lot of events uh, uh, for base events teaching things and that kind of thing and they're all in this past events folder so this is great when I'm preparing to do let's say the Golden Gate Base Camp uh, 2025 I guess will be the next one well I could see what do we do at Golden Gate Base Camp 2023 you can also have multiple tabs and I find this great uh, when I want to look at a part if I've got like the score up but I also want to see a part uh, for this conducting event, I did this quite a bit. Let's say I wanted to see what the first violinist saw in front of them. Well, I can just call it the first violin part right there. Give them some fingering advice and that kind of thing. So tabs are great, just like tabs and anything else. I find them uh, useful in Fourscore. Don't use them all the time, uh, but sometimes I do and it's great that they're there. I also find set lists really helpful for teaching. So these are some former private students. If I uh, gave a student a new piece, I would just put it in this set list. That helps me remember what they're working on and that is just a great way to, um, to stay organized with people and let's say I wanted to make some notes and then share it with them. Well, that's easy to do. I can just hit the three dots and I can uh, share this out. I can share it out with or without annotations. Usually for the students, it's with the annotations. So I hit that, it's creating an option and then I can uh, uh, share out, email, text, airdrop, whatever. Another thing that is super cool, especially for teaching, let's say I wanted to give this let it be to a student, but I didn't want to put all the fingerings on my part. Um, well, I can just clone this let it be. Well, I can rename this one, let it be, and say like my former student Anton. Okay, so now this is Anton's copy. I can go to set lists and I can add it to Anton, I'll search. There's Anton and it's added. And now let it be Anton. Uh, I can make marks on this and that will be on this version. But you are not actually adding a new file. It's like the same file and it's just associating different data and, and, and annotations and that kind of thing. And it's a really nice way if you give the same piece to the same students to have like a clean copy that you give to students and then you start marking on it but it doesn't junk up all the other copies or your own copy that you use. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Cloning is really cool, especially for teaching. I would listen to a student play a concerto and I would make a uh, copy of that concerto and I would just mark what I thought about that particular performance and circle notes that were out of tune and that kind of thing. So very useful feature and uh, yeah, especially for teaching. If you double tap, you can get some different display options. The two page one is great uh, if you got really good vision or if you're conducting or something like that. And then if you flip the iPad to the uh, portrait orientation, which I'm usually using it just have it in widescreen for this video um, then it will go to single page and so that's a great way to if you want to look at a score and get more information in front of you and then you can double tap and turn that off a whole bunch of other really cool uh, modes and then also if you hit this little uh, face icon or hold it down these are different ways to make page turns happen now I usually just use an air turn foot pedal it's charging over there but with this I can like if I do it right, yeah, I can turn my head and you can also, I think, wink or do something with your mouth. I'm not sure that I 
trust the technology in an actual performance, I would have to practice turning my head or, or winking or that kind of thing quite a bit before I actually used it in a performance. But that's just a look inside Fourscore, hopefully useful. It's something I use every day and I find it very, very helpful for keeping me organized, making sure that I have all the music I need for any occasion at any time. And I find it to be a very tolerant app, a very forgiving. You do not have to be super organized with it, but if you uh, wake up too early one morning and want to get in there and organize, it's very easy to do that. And I would just recommend it starting to get material in here. I find that the more I have in here, the more useful it is. I believe it backs up to iCloud. It definitely backs up. Uh, again, I haven't researched how it works, but I have gone through multiple iPad Pros. I think this is my fourth one. And when it does that restore from iCloud, uh, everything from the last iPad is on the new iPad. That was the big worry of mine, getting all my music into Fourscore, and I would make these giant multi-gigabyte Fourscore backups, and then I found after a few iPads, it just always seemed to transfer over. So use that feature at your own peril, I guess, but I've been using it for, what, seven years now. Never had a blip, never had a problem, never had a crash. It's just rock solid, simple, but full-featured when you get into it. Hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next one.